On today's episode, there is a lot. We got to break down that crazy Thursday night matchup, a whole bunch of injury news to cover, and of course, the rest of the matchups. And you do not want to miss the end of the show. Jason Moore, he may have switched his favorite team. You'll have to stay tuned to find out what that's about. Subscribe to this channel, leave us a comment, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, September 23rd. I looked Jason Moore directly in the eyes when I introduced the show. That was a welcome specifically for Jason. Wow. I, the Andy Holloway welcomed me into the show. I am so happy. Hey, check this out. My chopped liver over here? What's Mike, going on? No, I was about to just uh, introduce you. Okay. Mike, welcome to this show. We missed you yesterday. You. And because we missed you yesterday, uh-huh. we missed it's football time. We I, let the people down. We really let them down. I was going to say, the, I am, I'm not a hundo yet, but there was multiple disturbances in the force yesterday that, that rose me from my, my slumber. Uh, number one was just an, just an overwhelming sense of emptiness where something needed to be there, and it just wasn't. And, of course, it, it turns out it's football time was very lacking. And then... Uh oh! There was a a much larger mm. disturbance where <laughs> it felt like I was giving some analysis that definitely was not something I would say. I don't I, know what you speak of. I haven't looked into it further, mm. but it just was a re- like you had great analysis. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah your no, starts okay. great stuff. Starts the week we we you know we took the mantle. You were you were down and out. Yes, and as your friends, mm-hmm. we wanted to share your insights. Good. I hope it was really helpful information that I would give. No question about it. A couple things here at the top before we recap last night's game and move on to more matchups. And, of course, Jason having to bear the shame of Ooh, his very, rather, um, very excited I don't today. know, pint-sized lineup, we'll call it, from last week. I'm, I mean, this was... It was a halfer. I'm yeah. excited for this week's shame. I've I've turned all the, the fear that what into uh, excitement. Okay. Yeah, your psychiatrist told you to take that approach for... Right, just okay. to stop the tears. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sunday Live, every single week, Mike, the fantasy hitman. If you go to ballerslive.com, you can get connected over there. But Mike will be live Sunday morning, uh, Twitter, YouTube, and now TikTok, Mike. Yeah, baby. We figured it out. So do you have to do a dance for some of these questions? I don't know what the – does it require movement? I hadn't thought about that, but I'll work something up. What's the latest – you song just, that's going on. I don't know, but you need yeah, two dances. Either. You need a <laughs> <laughs> you need a stardom dance, and then you uh, need some sort of sit em move. Okay. Okay. I'll work and, it out. And maybe something with like a rainy day schedule. You know, if they're getting oh, if the weather's yep. coming in. Well, Trey Lance is not playing uh, right. this week, so I imagine it'll be clear skies across <laughs> the nation. <laughs> uh, it is Friday. Put Clan Friday. Shout out to the Foot Clan. Appreciate each and every one of you. And every Friday we say thank you with a giveaway to a supporter at jointhefoot.com. Today, the winner of a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com is Zerk36. That is the name? Zerk. Zerk. Zerk36. It sounds like a Power Rangers uh, vil- it, villain. Yeah. Like Zerk. Go. Let's go kill Zerk. Yeah. Okay. Uh. But, Orphan time. <laughs> but congratulations. Uh, you win a $100 gift card. Now we get to transition into what um, I've been looking forward to the most on today's show. Oh, man. Uh, the Cleveland Browns beat the Pittsburgh Steelers last night 29-17. to 17. Doesn't sound right for what the game was. And, uh, well, let's, let's look that at... wasn't the score with five seconds to go. The most consequential part of the night. Now, Jason and I, we have a... Uh, a legal record matchup head to head. 
And I mean, Jason's just heavily favored, but I know what buttons to push to get the fear to uh, kind of circulate within you. And that's the the Buffalo Wild Wings that's button right. that you push at the end of the game? <laughs> that is right. So I did push the Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wings button at the end of the game. That's a good I'm, reference. <laughs> I'm, watching, I'm watching this game, and we're getting to the point where, like, Cleveland's defense was pretty good in the game. You could e easily say that Pittsburgh's offense was really bad, but they weren't they, – no sacks. I mean, like, the first sack came, like, I don't know, two minutes left in the game on one of these drives that Mitch Trubisky was trying to get down the field, and no turnovers. And so I played the Cleveland defense against Jason, and we're sitting here with, like, two points. And a couple minutes left in the game, and I, I call – Papa Josh, I'm like, let's go play some Warzone. You know, Kyler Murray's on. Let's go play with him. Um, of course he's on. Yeah, I mean, he's always on. <laughs> so we we go on, and and Papa Josh, are you on the microphone, Papa Josh? I am indeed. Okay. Well, um, try to descri describe for me the sound I made with the final <laughs> play of the game. Because I was watching it live while we were, you know, playing some Warzone. And, and um, what did it sound like to you? Ah! <laughs> It was jubilation. <laughs> that was the. I, I'm not sure it sounded exactly that like that. The, that was the death of a seagull. Yeah. No, that's the post Chipotle sound <laughs> yeah. you made. Um, no, it was a very hearty giggle because on the final play of the game, the Browns' defense ends up with a fumble recovery and a touchdown, puts up eight extra points. And Jason, you took that. Uh, you took that I, I very poorly. I didn't like it. Um, when when you're when you're favored in a matchup, the way that you lose is so often the defense, like uh, the the unexpected. Um, wow, you got a a good score from your defense, and the fact that so I I was at uh, my children's performance for the second half of the football game, so I was kind of following along on my phone, mm -hmm. and af after the bows, things were over, and I pull my phone out and I look at our matchup, and there are 15 seconds. <laughs> left in this game and he scored two fantasy points i was like fantastic and then i just i put it away i didn't even think about it and then i found out later i was like you got 10 points <laughs> no we're not partying here this, this is bad news this feels like an abuse of the party lights right now yeah that last play which was this like lateral um it, disgusting fail well, pile so we'll, can i spell mike spell it out yeah, for so them what we'll, actually happened on the play so in we'll terms of break it down so i mean they went hook and ladder I mean, they didn't have really much choice. They had to score a touchdown. And uh, so what ended up happening, so we got the Browns DST. They That's a fumble recovery and a touchdown. So we have a plus eight points. I don't know if they were credited with the causing the fumble because sometimes there's the, the plus one for causing it, plus one for recovering it. So seven or eight points, we'll see. Deontay Johnson did get a catch for eight yards. So congrats. Nice. Najee lost four yards and was credited with the fumble, so he lost 2.6 points. And Clay, Chase Claypool also lost a few yards, so he lost, you know, about half a point. Well, and I saw multiple people with parlays and things that had you, did you Steelers plus seven and a half. Yes, saw many, many of those. Also saw the uh, the DraftKings winning lineups. Did you guys see that note? What, what did the Cleveland defense they, lead somebody to victory? So. Uh, the, oh, the, the people did see that. The people at the top were splitting the the milli, and they were going to be splitting about a quarter of a million dollars. That was the split. They yes, weren't splitting that. Was, that. that. They was, were splitting the million, and they were going to yes. take about a quarter of a million home. And then the touchdown changed those lineups to win about seven hundred dollars. Oh, because how many ties? Be, because the, they got, they, they oh, got those out people of first that place. were in first place. Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, it was um, brutal. It was brutal unless you had the Cleveland D and then you were happy. Nick Chubb, 23 for 113 and one. He's I had somebody. Stud. Yeah, he is. And I had somebody on, on Twitter say like, uh, you know, footballers, why, why is it crickets about Nick Chubb? He's the best fantasy running back out there. Um, no, he's not. Right. He's, no. He might be the best running back out there. Which we've said many times. If you look on our website, we give you a consistency metric for Nick Chubb. 64% of the time over his last 17 games, he's given you more than 10.5 points. That's a pretty good consistency for running back, but it's certainly not the best. And, you know, this game doesn't look as pretty on the fantasy score sheet if Kareem Hunt scores either of his goal line opportunities, which he didn't. Uh, he was stuffed twice on the goal line. They had to give a fourth down to Nick Chubb, who did get in. 
Um, otherwise, Nick Chubb, no catches in this game. Uh, that touchdown was the only one he had, so he's great. Yes. But translating that to fantasy, he's not at the top of the list because he doesn't catch the ball. Well, and, and you want him in matchups like this where the other offense isn't going to score a lot because he is not game script proof as, you know, if they're down multi scores mm -hmm. and they've got to throw the ball more, that's really not his wheelhouse. So this matchup turned out well because, and this is worth discussing, the disgusting offense of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are not able to do much. And, you know, I, I don't think this was the Browns just shutting them down. I think this is Mitchell Trubisky and a bad offensive line that on almost all matchups going forward is not going to be pretty. Well, you, you're right, and, and it's a problem, and there's going to be continued calls in Pittsburgh for the rookie to have an opportunity. Deontay Johnson in two consecutive weeks, very frustrated on the field, still managed to put up eight for 84, but touchdown opportunities are, are going down. Najee Harris, I don't think, has been over 60 yards in any of the three matchups. Yeah, the, the, the nice thing, Najee looked good. Like, he, you know, I mean, he had a problem getting through the offensive line for a lot of these carries, but his touchdown run in particular was, that was vintage Najee Harris, stiff-armed two defenders, and then just exploded, I, I think, a cornerback as he, you know, paraded into the end zone. So he at least looked good. And the opportunities are still there, but he he won't he you can't get the volume that Najee needs if this team is always going to be coming back from uh, from from a deficit. And Mitch Trubisky is not the quarterback who dumps it off to Najee Harris all the time. Three catches uh, yesterday in a in a game where it seemed like Najee Harris, if this were Big Ben, Najee Harris would have had six seven receptions. Yeah, I mean you you can't get volume when you can't get first downs. That's just right. a, uh, <laughs> the, the the drive's over and you had no longer have opportunities to touch the ball. When the change to the rookie comes, and I do believe it, it will, will happen. It will happen. I don't think that is the solve that you're looking for. Rookie Kenny Pickett, I like Kenny Pickett. I think he is much better than Trubisky going forward. Uh, a better prospect, and maybe it does bump it up five ten percent but it's not going to you know it's not going to rescue this offense on the other side of the ball David Njoku nine for 89 with the score looked fantastic this was the guy that we thought we could see during the off season. <laughs> it's fantastic that it happened but week three we've if you drafted David Njoku you already you already dumped it to the waiver wire Jason's face is telling me uh, this is telling he me he did that no, no, no. This is telling me that Kyle Pitts' game is coming. Uh, because the, Why does that make you sad? The, because I'm playing against Kyle Pitts. Uh, Andy's, Andy's team is going to erupt. He's living in a full paranoia right I, now. Yeah. But my point is this. He wants to beat me get so it, get bad. Get it together, man. I do want to beat you very, very uh, badly. But, no, my, my point is that the, the metrics behind the scenes, routes run, part, you know, usage and participation of the offense, those numbers were really, really good for David Njoku, but the targets and the receptions and the yards, they just weren't there. And so it's one of those things where you, the same thing's happening for Kyle Pitts. Everything behind the scenes, the, the usage, the routes run, the participation in the offense is fantastic. So they, it, his good games are going to come. Well, the, the hard part was a lot of people bought into Pat Fryermuth, and he, he only had two catches, and they were both on the final drive of the yeah, game. saved. Which, still, two for 41, not what you want. And so that's worth mentioning. George Pickens had a huge catch down the sideline, but again, not an option right now in this quarterback that was situation. An awesome catch. One of the best I've ever seen. Did you guys? Yes, it, the, the catch was I mean, sensational. He definitely pushed off on that play, but uh, who cares? That's what they do. But did you guys notice that? So George Pickens, before the game, he had the uh, he talked to the media, which is or someone put it in the media. I don't know exactly how the comment got there, but of him saying. Look, I'm always open. Throw you need to throw me the ball. He was also mad on the sideline later. I and saw that. Did you notice how the uh, the offense started for the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, in 12 personnel with with George Pickens off the field? Yeah, I mean you don't do that with Mike Not Tomlin. To Tomlin. No, you don't. Uh, I say, and then the Jalen Warren. I wanted okay. to mention Jalen Warren real quick, running back uh, depth piece for Pittsburgh, but got some opportunities in this game. One huge play called back. Yep. That was a monster uh, pass catching uh, situation. It was four for thirty on the ground. I only say that because Benny Snell's never looked close to as good as Jalen Warren did, and so no if doubt. something happened to Najee Harris, you probably have somebody that would actually put up some points. Yeah, uh, we've been talking about uh, Rashad White, or I have as as a great stash player in case of an injury. Jalen Warren's one of the few 
guys that you know, should the starter go down, he's going to get the full workload. The difference, obviously, is that we just talked about how this offense is not going to be great, yeah. so it's it's still a, a, a limited It'll workload. Still be an RB2, and I'm surprised we've gotten this far into the show, and we, Jason has not yet victory lapped his boy. Hanging with Mr. Cooper? Amari Cooper. <laughs> Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah, baby. Off of the atrocious week one, then week two, 37% of the targets, 35% of the targets against Pittsburgh. Looked good. Jacoby Brissett looked very competent. Last night, I don't know if that's a product of the Steelers not being able to get the defense that they want with T.J. Watt out, but Amari Cooper, if he's going to get 35% of the targets, I mean, this, that's that's top 12 numbers. He's really good at football. I think he's a really good wide receiver. Now, if I can trade him high, I'm doing that because I don't really? trust. You're not just keeping? Well, because yeah, Brissett's going to be to... under 200 yards half the time. Exactly. I 100% right. Brissett is going to be at – 200 on average every week and you just don't want to split that up if you can trade high on back-to-back -back 100 and a touchdown yep. weeks you got to cash in even though I think Amari Cooper's great yeah what were we talking about Cooper versus Garrett Wilson uh yes yes okay. yeah we'll see how the rest of that goes news and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance some of the injury updates and news we'll cover within the matchups, the individual matchups on today's show. But Christian McCaffrey uh, sent panic, uh, I'm sure, through. This was the other disturbance in the force yes. view at home yesterday. Dealing with some ankle stiffness, now off the injury report and will play, but a little bit of fear. I'm like, Carolina, we, we talked about this earlier when he cut himself or when he got the, the cut from the cleat. Mm -hmm. Carolina beat reporters, please. Over eager. We are we are fragile yeah. in the fantasy football community. Make sure that all context for Christian McCaffrey is given. Don't do not tweet out McCaffrey added to injury report. Don't do not tweet that out <laughs> without letting us know exactly what happened. Jacoby Myers didn't practice again on Thursday, so everybody that chased after him on the waiver wire, I don't know if he's going to play this week. It's looking um, uncertain. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Gabe Davis limited in practice says he quote. He's 100% optimistical play. So just just 100% optimistic? Right, right. He's just okay. wanting us to know he's a very positive dude. He is in I great like spirits. It, Gabe. Yeah. I'm 100% optimistic. <laughs> he's good. Right? I I I'm, Yeah, sure. I'm very optimistic about that. Josh Jacobs didn't practice due to an illness. Hunter Infro still in concussion protocol. That one matters because if you're not progressing through Thursday, it looks like you're yeah. probably not going to clear four this week. Michael Pittman should be back. Got another limited practice in on Thursday. We're expecting that, right? I yes. sure am. And Let's Jason, go. you have some sort of snow model update for us? Oh, baby. Breaking news. We're hitting this, the button for this? I am. This is big time news, guys. This is we, where he's at with this matchup. We, we got, we got, this isn't about the matchup solely. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Just predominantly, not solely, but the, uh, the big news here is that there have been snowflakes hitting the ground in Vermont. We brought this up a while ago. Look, when snow hits the ground in Vermont, Derek Henry and the Yeti completes. He is. He, 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 the metamorphosis happens. It happens. We talked about it all last year. Why is it Vermont? Yeah, I've never heard the Vermont thing until yesterday. Oh, yeah. Th this was something that was uh, – it, it was uh, mostly on the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast. And by mostly, I mean entirely. Ah. Um, that is where this <laughs> originates. There was a huge correlation shown because he is the Yeti and people yes, figured he, he comes out in the snow mm -hmm. and when the snow hits the ground in Vermont – he is awesome, and literally today we got news that the first snowflakes are hitting the ground. So, look, this I know you're. I like the you reasoning was quote because he is the yeti. Yeah. Yes. Well, he couldn't become the yeti until the the snow. That's hit. the part of the yeah. argument we concede: the fact that he is absolutely a yeti. Yeah. He was hibernating, but now he's going to come out. This so is you're his feeling time very here. optimistic. Like, oh, Derek Henry is going to have a great game. Imagine a yeti and all that like. The size and the muscle and and the fur in the hum in the summer. No, that'd be uncomfortable. Like he has to stay human form 
and then become the Yeti once. I like that Mike is now in on this. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. I'm in on him being the Yeti. I don't. I still am. Well, don't worry, guys. Our own injury expert, Matthew Betts, we are sending him on location. We will have boots (laughs) in the ground in (laughs) In the ground, ground. (laughs) not on the ground. Well, that's right because the snow. You. you, Oh, okay. You go into the ground. Thank you. Um, He will be there. Next week for it's more the on the snow model. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that report, Jason. I uh, we got to give you the news more often. Mm-hmm. That was today's news notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's do a quick break and we'll get into the matchups. Uh, you're going to beat me this week, Jason. You oh, know that, right? I do not. Know I mean, that. congrats. And to you, sir. Uh huh. Do you right. like you any both. pizza this week? I will happily you both order suck. you. A, this is pathetic. Order you well, no. I mean, I I have no expectation of winning, Mike. Even with your freebie from the Browns last no, night. No, that could never happen. Okay. L- let's get into the matchups. Fantasy forecast. Yesterday, we covered the Texans, Bears, Raiders, Titans, Chiefs, Colts, Bills, Dolphins, Lions, Vikings, Ravens, Patriots, Bengals, Jets. So uh, you can uh, scroll down, click on yesterday's episode if you want to hear those matchup breakdowns. Eight games left. The Eagles at 2-0 taking on the Washington Commanders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Philadelphia, minus six on the road. Another road favorite, Jason. Over under is 47 and a half. Here we go. Yeah, Jalen Hurts looked very good last week, particularly in the first half where they put up all their points. And, um, you know, in two games, 28 rush attempts for Jalen Hurts. That would be top 12 among running backs. That's nice. That is, uh, he's been great. Three rushing touchdowns. What does he have, one passing touchdown in the year? That's correct. Yeah, just one. Yeah, I mean, it just shows you the, I don't know, the league winning ability. For Jalen Hurts, because if if there is a game where they have to really compete and he he happens to throw a couple of touchdowns, the numbers are going to be ridiculous. Carson Wentz gets the revenge game here. Uh, Yeah, I mean, he's playing against former team. I don't know if he gets revenge. Okay, he can attempt it. Yeah, he will attempt it. Back to back quarterback three finishes by Carson Wentz. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the the weapons that he's throwing to are very good. Uh, Scott Turner has done a great job now that he's got weapons. Curtis Samuel has manufactured touches. Jahan Dotson has looked great for a first-round rookie. And it's funny because Terry McLaurin almost feels like the odd man out, even though he is the best wide receiver of the group. So if you want to stay in the flames with Carson Wentz, and e- even though the, the Eagles' defense has been very good so far, although I credit a lot of that with Kirk Cousins' own self uh, sure. Implosion. The, the Vikings as a whole. Yeah. I don't know that that's true. I don't think it was the Vikings as a whole. Well, when Irv Smith drops a touchdown pass down the field, they, he's included. Okay. I All mean, right. Kirk Give Cousins a made a perfect credit. throw down the field, and he would have had another touchdown pass. When you have a bunch of fadeaway jump shot, you know, how many interceptions were dropped, too, by, uh, by the true. Eagles? But anyways, I do think that you could start Carson Wentz this week. I would start him over Tom Brady. That's been kind of the barometer check of... Brady without all these weapons, you know, are you going to start him? And I, I think, you know, the Goffs and the Winces, um, I would rather have. Antonio Gibson, the RB12 and RB15 the first two weeks. Through two weeks of the season, the Eagles are giving up a lot of fantasy points to the running back position. You're comfortable starting him? Um, not comfortable. I will play him. He was, he was the running back 15 because he scored, and the running back scoring up for the entire position was way, way down this past week. But we saw the game script completely flip because they were not in command, uh, so to speak, of most <laughs> of the game. Thank you. Uh, and it was uh, it was smooches. It was J.D. McKissick. And I expect that this is the game, or this is a type of game that J.D. McKissick will be on the field a little bit more. You know, 46% of the snaps last week, seven targets. This, I mean, it's J.D. McKissick and Gibson are – what do you think the game script is going to be? Do you think they will be in content, like it's a tight game, or they're going to be up? That's when Antonio Gibson will flourish. If they are trailing, it will be 
You're really hoping that Gibson falls into the end zone. Otherwise, McKissick is going to take so much work away. Yeah, I, I'm happy to start Gibson in either situation. I realize it'll be better, obviously, if they are winning the game and, and up for Gibson. But he still had 18 opportunities this last week. So the utilization is there. He wasn't super efficient with it. But I'm, I'm pretty happy to, to start Gibson. Andy's Almost Upset of the Week. Doubling down against the Eagles, eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Washington right. at home. Yeah. Six point dogs. Um, I like their opportunity here to keep up on the offensive side of the ball. It's a divisional matchup. I think it'll be close. We'll find out if I can go to three and zero on the almost upsets. All right. Uh, the wide receiver. And so to answer the question, I think Gibson will have opportunities. McLaurin, Samuel, Dotson. All of them are in play for mm -hmm. fantasy uh, yep. managers. Samuel, if he puts another big game up, you know, you're going to have three to start the season. and That would be on fire. Yeah, that would be pretty impressive. And it would also put you in a position where, you know, McLaurin is not a not the bona fide leader in terms of fantasy production there. So that might, you know, you drafted him to be that. So I don't know how your view of Terry McLaurin will change. Logan Thomas See on the streaming radar. Yeah, a little bit. Scored last week, right? Yeah, the 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 problem for Logan Thomas is the fact that they have three excellent wide receivers to go to. I know he came through last week, but he's still recovering from the ACL. I would I'd prefer to see more, you know, more routes, more targets and things like that before I'm going to Yeah, it was him. nice to see him on the field more, but three targets in uh or three three receptions both weeks. You you need a touchdown in yep. order to have success. Miles Sanders. Yes, please. 15 and 20 opportunities in the last two weeks. I think this season he's still going to be mostly allergic to the end zone, but the opportunities have been there. Mike, you're into Miles yeah. Sanders this week. Yeah, Washington allowing seven and a half yards per carry. <laughs> and like the opportunities have been there, like you said, 15 and 20 for Miles Sanders. Just the makes end. me think Jalen Hurts is going to run a, it, even better. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jalen Hurts is is going to get his, but they have been going to Miles Sanders. It's it's a committee, but Miles Sanders is the clear leader of the committee. I agree. The the you don't bank on Miles Sanders getting a touchdown. It's just that's a little extra gravy on on uh, what he is, which is which is like a a mid range running back too. Devontae Smith in this game or J Jahan Dotson on the other side? Oh, that's a good question. I'm going to go Devonta Smith over Jahan Dotson. Dotson's the only wide receiver rookie over the last decade with three receiving touchdowns in the first two games. Very interesting. But, again, needs that right yeah. now with the volume. We, we, would need, we need more targets for Dotson. New Orleans, the Saints at 101 taking on the 0-2 Carolina Panthers. This game is in Carolina. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, New Orleans, road favorites, minus 2.5. The over-under is 41. So, you know, you're going to have this uh, two former number one pick battle between Jameis and Baker. Uh, who can le lose the game least for their team? <laughs> that is a really funny. Like, usually when you get two former number one overall picks against each other, it's like, oh, that's exciting. And this is like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, broken back Jameis versus broken spirit Baker. <laughs> broken back Jameis. We're, we're there. Um, is he, he has a back in that has some fractures. Yeah, yeah. Well, who didn't Matthew Stafford play with fractures in his back for an entire season? Yeah, he's a gamer. Yeah. So I mean, let's let's set the standard what, for for he, Jameis. Was he great or? Uh, we're not going to talk about specifics. <laughs> so, I mean, other than the, of I, the spine, I know that he will play. Yes, yeah. Jameis. Jameis played. Uh, but we saw it, the Buccaneers are certainly a much more formidable foe than the Atlanta Falcons. But I mean really big drops in all metrics of efficiency for Jameis. I think that, that makes this a really good uh, litmus test for Jameis, Witness, Jameis Winston because – Jameis Win Witness? Yes, thank you. Um, because I, you can't tell whether or not it was the awesome Buccaneers defense, who is awesome. I mean, uh, they, are, they look – outstanding now that Bruce Arians is is gone Todd Bowles is in there's you know that that defense has really stepped it up and so Jameis might be fine or is it the the back issue um the injury to Alvin Kamara that really hurt and the Carolina Panthers are kind of that middle of the road defense where 
it, I, I'm excited to see if the Saints can get it done with all their pass catchers, Chris Olave, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is my start of the week this week. I think he's a good matchup. Yeah, I'm in on that. So I'm I'm really curious if Jameis looks bad in this game. I'm going to be much more scared of the back. They also did not have Alvin Kamara in week two, right? Uh, as part of the offense, so. How do you have confidence then in the pass catchers, Jason? You you seem to. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Michael Thomas, one, he is a very good wide receiver, obviously, and two, the targets have been there and the valuable targets in the red zone. So he projects as a very solid wide receiver, too. Um, I'm, I'm not putting him up as, you know, some elite option this week. We had a question uh, yesterday where, you know, it – they had really good options, and I benched Michael Thomas, but I do think that he should be in most starting lineups. Um, the team is certainly not uh, blaming injury yet. What about Chris Olave? Air yards for days last week. Uh, prayer yards. O o Olave or Dotson this week? I would go Olave. I'm going to uh, stick yeah. to the targets. Yeah, and I'm going to taste yards. the volume of Olave. Give me the uh, temperature check on Christian McCaffrey. 20 opportunities last week. People are disappointed. He's still the running back nine. Um, he's he's still Christian McCaffrey. He's still very good. The, the The disappointing part is the targets. Baker is not checking it down to Christian McCaffrey, which is is nonsense. Like If you're a quarterback and you've seen what Christian McCaffrey has done in his career, you need to get him the ball more. So that's a, hopefully the coaching – figures that out uh otherwise Christian McCaffrey will still be a running back one but just he's not going to compete for that elite top spot it, it really is a situation of third down conversions because his opportunities and his usage is outstanding it's very similar to the conversation with Najee where um his he's on the field more than anyone right. he's being passed to he's being given the ball but if they don't convert first downs and don't have I mean their total plays run is among the worst in the league so that's really what it comes down to is can the offense get it together I don't think the offense gets it together against the Saints good defense well and that's a that's a problem with somebody like Damian Pierce too with that offense and how many play how are you are you moving the ball down the field or not right so he can score. Jacksonville one and one taking on the Los Angeles Chargers who are one and one the DraftKings Sportsbook line here Chargers minus seven at home, over-under is 47 points. Um, this is a great matchup between uh, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, who looks to be back in this game, looked good in practice yesterday, has thrown three passing touchdowns in both of his starts. And so the only thing that you can say about Justin Herbert in this game in any sort of negative sense is you just hope he doesn't re-injure or yep. – um, you know, the injury becomes more severe. So do we know, is he going to play in a, uh, a flackle a jacket? Yeah. yeah. The device. I mean, I imagine he will, but I, I don't know. We haven't got the confirmation on that yet. Yeah. And he didn't, you know, the, the nuance of his injury is something we need to pay attention to. Uh, the chargers defense is very, very good. Um, second in points per drive, uh, on offense. So right now, it should be all Chargers confident starts, right? Eckler, yeah. Mike Williams. We think Keenan Allen will get back on the field. That's the, that. I if think he's that's active, the you start him though. Yeah, I, I think I'm at that as well. But hopefully, you get some re like really positive news on Keenan Allen of like, oh no, he's full go. He's ready because the if he I mean, if he's still hampered by the hamstring, that will be that could be a potentially brutal. Uh, awakening on Sunday. Yeah, I think the the real question here is because if Keenan Allen is starting, it's you're pro I'm you're going to play him. You're yeah. going to put him in your lineup. The the one player that seems like he could go in and out is Josh Palmer. If Keenan is playing, you are not starting Josh Palmer. You're not saying, oh well, maybe Keenan will hurt his hamstring. Uh, and if Keenan is out, I think Josh Palmer's a fine play. Ninety one percent of snaps last week. Breaking news. We co we covered the game yesterday. Okay. But we did get uh, an update just now off of Twitter uh, from Jamison Hensley saying Rashad Bateman not present. Uh, that sucks. During the media viewing portion of Friday's practice. Uh, he was not on the injury report yesterday, but we don't have any update on Rashad Bateman. Obviously, very important to pay attention to that. Mike's face says, I'm like starting that. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Who has Bateman in league of record again? I do. <laughs> 
How your, do you feel about that, your Andy? Your panic fuels. The, yeah. Well, you've made some trades. you got depth. Uh, offensive tackle Ronnie Stanley not present either for the Ravens, which is uh, problematic for Lamar. Mike's face very grimacy in the moment. So that's your update. Yeah, I don't like that very much. Uh, on the Saints side, uh, Alvin Kamara, we expect him to be back. What? You mean We're the Jags? Back. We're going back to the Saints? What did I say? <laughs> the Saints side. You wanted to talk I more did. Alvin I Kamara. scrolled up the doc. <laughs> I did. I scrolled up. Uh, that's a fair That's a fair what? <laughs> you know? A, what? Uh, Trevor Lawrence, James Robinson, Is Travis Etienne, Christian Kirk. Kirk has been outstanding through two weeks. Yeah, he's been fantastic. 26% of the targets, leading the NFL in slot receiving yards. You are, for for where you got him, you're probably still playing him, but this is not this is not a top-tier matchup. The Chargers can can shut down slot wide receivers. Well, and that translates to James Robinson and Travis Etienne. This could be a down week for both of those players. I agree. We had Never Not Working yesterday and talked about the impact of being heavy underdogs. If you are not favored and you are five or more points, the underdog, it is not necessarily uh, a good outcome for you at the running back position. Game script, James Robinson is not going to have 25 opportunities. Yeah, and if they're shutting down the slot, I do think that, Mike, your uh, start of the week in Evan Ingram is a very good playoff of the waivers. I thought it was Taysom. Week. Well, yeah, it was, it, he had a co, co-starters. co mm, Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah thought... Evan, Evan Ingram's not, he's not going to tear the roof off, but... He's the Taysom Hill of the Jaguars. <laughs> How dare you? He gets far more opportunities. Yeah, he led them in targets last week. He is on the field. He is a, a real part of the offense. Ninth most routes at the tight end position, man. Everett or Ingram this week, Mike, with your conviction about Ingram. Ooh. That's why the if I needed the bigger game, and I ha somehow had both these options. If I needed the bigger game, I would go with Everett. But Ingram is Ingram's just a safe floor play. The Los Angeles Rams at 1-1 one one travel to Arizona to take on the Cardinals, who are also 1-1. One one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line? Road favorite. Los Angeles minus 3.5 over under is 48.5. Sean McVay has a 10-1 um, and one record against Cliff Kingsbury. So that's where we're at. Last year, Cardinals won the first matchup in Los Angeles. Otherwise, McVay has dominated, including the playoffs. Um, right now you, you can't have any hesitation about key Ram offensive players because the Cardinals are, they're in the bottom three against quarterbacks, running backs, and tight ends in terms of fantasy points given up. It's been, other than the second half of last week, which they did, uh, they only gave up three points to the Raiders. It's been really, really bad on defense. And so right now you can't have any confidence that they can slow down Matthew Stafford with Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson. I think both of those guys are in play. Tyler Higby is Jason's Higby, start of yes. the week. Oh, I'm. I Jason love that went one. double up on the Rams with Stafford yep. and Higby. Yeah, I, I think that they're going to be able to throw on the Cardinals no problemo. The question for the Rams, I think, is the Daryl Henderson Cam Akers split. If you've got to start one of them, it would be Daryl Henderson. But are you excited to start no. Daryl Henderson? Yeah, I don't. I don't not, feel like not after they they recommitted to Cam Akers being the guy on the ground incredibly inefficient yet again so i mean I, how many games in a row of can, how many games in a row can cam Akers be running like sub three a carry all of them and well and the coaching staff still continue to give him the ball i mean maybe it's the whole season i don't know but it it was real if, if you got henderson on your team it's frustrating to see and Akers get so many opportunities and be so bad well, on the other side of the ball, there is some opportunity here for Arizona. The Rams are allowing the second most points per drive in the league right now. Uh, the highest early down success rate. This was a defense that gave up 100 total rushing yards to Kyler Murray last year. And, you know, the wide receivers, they're scoring a lot of points against the Rams. The question is, do the Cardinals have the kind of wide receivers that can take advantage of that? This is the Dorch. I mean, Hollywood Brown? Nah. He's, he's, he's a fine, fine he's wide fine. receiver to play. He has really disappointed for the opportunity of becoming the target hog alpha wide receiver one. That is not what this system from Cliff Kingsbury has produced with Marquise Brown. So now it shifts from the hope of him being the one without Hopkins to the hope of him uh, opening up things when Hopkins returns. He did hit that 
the ten plus target mark that Kyler said he was. He was going also to. a uh, what like a centimeter from that yep. being a touchdown on sure. the play down the field. So uh, would have scored in back to back weeks. But yeah, he has not. He's definitely not come out and done what like Rashad Bateman d has done in Baltimore. James Conner back on the practice field Friday. So right now, I don't think Daryl Williams, Eno are pivot options for your roster. If for some reason Connor was a surprise inactive, you could probably move to Daryl Williams and bet on goal line opportunities. But if if Connor plays, you're playing him. It's just not a great matchup. The right. Rams, the Rams giving up nine point three points to running back so far. Zach Ertz, though, uh, I am making him my start of the week this week. So necessary to this Cardinal offense. The pass rush is going to head Kyler's way. Ertz is arguably the most, you know, he could easily be the number one target in the game. Easily. Sure. Any other thoughts on this uh, matchup? Uh, no. Do I you mean, have confidence to flex Allen Robinson, wide receiver two Allen Robinson? Yeah, yeah, against the Cardinals, yes. The Falcons at 0-2 take on the 1-1 Seattle Seahawks. Kyle, are you thrilled to be tuning into this barn burner? Not at all. <laughs> okay, Mariota, Geno <laughs> Smith. You know, first round pick matchup. I'm just nervous for Pitts, that's all. I am too, brother. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus one at home, over under is 42. And so, battle of the bridge quarterbacks, here we go. Is anybody in this game a must-start option for your fantasy team? Oh, man. Uh, what a good question. So, he DK Metcalf, if, I don't know if you guys covered that, but he's, he's my start of the week for this particular matchup because – the Falcons have been so bad against fantasy wide receivers, 30th. Combine that with being at home and Pete Carroll at least saying they need to open it up a little bit more, which Geno Smith, very efficient game manager right now, number one in the NFL in completion rate, and yet dead last in average depth of target. So if we get to open that up just a little bit in this game, I think that DK Metcalf finally has – the, the big game that we've been waiting for. They do need to open it up. This is a matchup that they should be able to open it up a little bit more um, on. That being said, the Seahawks offense has not scored an offensive point in 90 minutes straight of gameplay. It has been since the first half of, op uh, of the first Six week. Six quarters. Six quarters of not having an offensive point scored. I think the Atlanta Falcons are a good, yeah, sure. good medicine for that. Yeah, this this is going to be tough. You know, the Steelers wanted to open it up, but then you realize you have Mitch Trubisky. So the risk of opening it up, you know, people want to know, does the do the Geno Smith turnover start to flow if they try to do sure. that? Um, so in terms of must start, Mike, you, you have confidence in Metcalf I having do. his big game. I mean, you know, this, yeah. I think Drake London is in the category. Oh, of, he's a must play to me. Of, of flex, flex worthy. 51% of the team's air yards. I do expect the Kyle Pitts involvement to go way up in this game. It is ironic that when I look at this game, there's only one must start, and it is Kyle Pitts. Um, I would like to start Drake London in certain situations, but plenty of rosters have wide receivers above him. There aren't rosters out there that drafted Kyle Pitts who have a better option. Uh, a lot of the waiver wire guys we're talking about, you know, I, I like Evan Ingram. I do. I think there's an opportunity for him this week. There is no way I would start Evan Ingram over Kyle Pitts. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he is, a, he is an absolute must start. The Cordero Patterson situation, at least on paper, Javante, 108 total yards against Seattle. My name is Jeff. Jeff Wilson, 103 total yards against Seattle. So if there was going to be a week to try to predict Patterson being okay, man, you could try it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind putting Patterson in there. He wasn't that great last week. It, you could tell in week one that the game plan was to have Cordero Patterson split the reps with running backs, but then the starting running back got injured and he took over. Come into week two, uh, Tyler Algier was there and they split those. So unless the running back gets injured from the get go, he's not going to be. You know, he had 22 carries week one. That's not happening again without an injury. But I do think the combination of him. His utilization of the passing game, the matchup against Seattle, he's a fine flex play. Rashad Penny managers are reeling. Oh, man. Don't he, start Penny. Don't start Walker. You can't start either one for, for a while. Okay. The Green Bay Packers at 1-1 one one take on the 2-0 and o Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa. And the DraftKings Sportsbook line here is Tampa minus one. 
Uh, the injury situation in Tampa Bay is uh, it's troublesome, to say the least. You have a suspended Mike Evans that will not play in this matchup. Julio, Godwin, Gage, and Perryman are all questionable. It's, you know, they had to sign Cole Beasley. This is why I love Leonard Fournette in this game. I think he's going to be necessary to both focal points of the offense. The running game, which is the one area the Packers have given up a decent amount of points, and then the passing game, just being a target for Tom Brady, running a ton of routes. You know, I said it on yesterday's show. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. thighs like what? The dumps, they're coming. Um, Brady is 2-0 and against Green Bay as the Buccaneer, but we are pretty, pretty down on Brady this week. Yeah, I think we're down on both offenses for what they usually are. Usually you love the Packers, you love the Buccaneers. Both teams are dealing with wide receiver injuries. I think a lot of the Packers side was, you know, uh, rest. Randall Cobb had an illness, and Alan Lazard's still working his way back from the ankle issue. But Lazard, Watkins, Christian Watson, and Randall Cobb all did not participate at all in practice on Thursday. Uh, that makes R Romeo Dubs maybe more involved uh, he's been kind of splitting with Christian Watson and uh, he could have full-time use but again the Buccaneers defense has been outrageously good to start the season if the Packers offense doesn't get clicking and they haven't looked great so far this season I, I think you could end up with uh, two poor offensive outings slight update from Tampa Bay no Chris Godwin at practice so he's going to miss which was expected. Julio Jones is working on the side with the trainers. Uh, with that happening on a Friday, that's not necessarily He's great not news playing. to start, but he'll be back soon, uh, just probably not this week. Aaron Jones, monster week last week. A.J. Dillon, 37 opportunities in two weeks, both of those players. It's not a good matchup. The Buccaneers' defense yeah. is very, very good, so I'd be more concerned about A.J. Dillon just because of explosive plays, right? Aaron Jones last week, Fewer opportunities, much better fantasy week. You have to hope for a big play. Kyle and I made the tough decision yesterday to go with... You benching AJ? We I, we did. We went Kareem Hunt over AJ Dillon. Okay. Bet you wish you got in the end zone on that goal oh, line. Oh, man. I was dying. Three freaking carries. Kareem, you're Kareem Hunt, dude. Get in. That's, that's your... That is where you dominate. Is inside. He should have gone five. over the top the way that Chubb did. I was. It was very frustrating that he did not score. Alan Lazard, where are we with the Lazard King? I mean, he what he ran the the most routes. Like he was in peripherals. He was their number one wide receiver. Didn't turn into a whole bunch. I know he had the touchdown. We're still. I I think we're still in in a you're circling the tarmac because you got to wait for him to truly be healthy. And then Aaron Rodgers, put him on your bench. I, right? If I could. Like, I I would do the disgusting... Goff? Oh, Goff for sure. D Goff is not... Doesn't make me feel bad about myself as a human. Starting Carson Wentz... That would make me feel... Me, makes me feel bad, but I think that's the, the right thing to do. <laughs> the 49ers, one and one, taking on the Denver Broncos in Sunday night football. Um, I'll be excited to, to see this game live. Jimmy G, back at it. Russell Wilson... Can they get the offense going? The DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus one and a half, another road favorite. Over-unders, 44 and a half. That's not a lot of points. But, you know, there, there's just – there's hope and dreams right now as the kind of currency in which we we're living in here with Denver. <laughs> yeah. You know, Russ discussed him in Unsolved Mysteries. Javante, you know, you love seeing how often he's on the field. 65% of snaps – Seems to be the pass catching back. 19 opportunities. Hasn't been able to get into the end zone because this team hasn't been able to put up any points. Yeah. the Again, I, the biggest concern for them to me is the coaching. Uh, I don't know if we get it figured out here. The San Francisco 49ers are a spectacular defense. That's not going to stop me. Of Like, Javante's in. Cortland Sutton is in. Do we have uh, – Jerry Judy is going to play? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, we're. Uh, I don't okay. think Jerry Judy's going to play. So questionable. I'm, it's possible, but Hamler was back at practice. Sutton's the only option that you can really take, yeah. right, in the wide receiver room, Jason. Yeah, that's it. I, it's it's pretty easy on that side of the ball. Uh, I'm, By the I'm, way, the 49ers have not allowed a team to rush for 100, uh, 100 yards in seven straight games. Well, my question was going to be Russ. If you have no Judy, 
or you have a limited Judy, are you going to Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, those types? I am, yeah. Until okay. I see it from Russ, if Jerry Judy's not out there and his weapons are a little bit limited, the San Francisco 49ers, they're a good defense. Yes, uh, right are. now they're a little inflated because of their first two weeks matchups. You know, they're b basically like top 10, top five across the board. I don't think they're that good, but they are a solid defense. Um, and we haven't seen the Broncos offense do much. So I am uh, putting Russ on the bench. Certainly not cutting him because he's Russell Wilson, uh, but I would. Uh, there's there's plenty of other options that I think you could start over him. This could be good theater this week because they're at home in Denver. That crowd, if their offense stagnates in the first half, I mean the frustration that we've seen already with the coaching staff and their ability to kind of get things together. Um, you know, it'll be three struggling weeks if they can't do it. Jeff Wilson's going to start at running back for the Forty he Niners. He's a must play. Yep, Broncos defense has been very good against running backs, but Wilson is the guy. Uh, Debo, of course you play him, but through two weeks, wide receiver 29, wide receiver 25, I do think things will be better for him with Jimmy G. Agreed. And Brandon Ayuk is interesting. Uh, I mean, Welcome back, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, based off of everything we heard over the offseason, of, of not just from the, the beat reporters, but from the players themselves saying Brandon Ayuk, has been tearing up training camp. He looks fantastic. And now you have the pocket passer back. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is – would you go try to trade low for him right now or would you let this weekend ride out against the Denver Broncos who are – I mean, it's two weeks, but they're currently number one against fantasy wide receivers. Would you predict a bad game and then go get Ayuk? I think, I think he's going to end up on some waiver wires. He might. Yeah, I mean, I I think if Brandon Ayuk is projected to be good, he should be fine in this game. I You know, obviously the Broncos have been great so far, but uh, somewhat similar to the 49ers, the first two weeks matchups, you know, when you're uh, playing against Geno Smith and, and change, um, it, it inflates your, your numbers. I think Brandon Ayuk, if you want him, you go get him now because it's not like he's – it's not like he's going to cost you a lot to get right. Brandon Ayuk. He's now. not rostered in twenty percent of leagues. Exactly. Right. So like you can he's... actually go sign him and and just hold on to him as a flyer. Yeah, he's a throw-in on a trade. You're not trying to, you know, acquire him at any cost. Kittle should play in this game. That's the good news for the Forty ers And you played. Oh, really? Kittle. I had not. Yeah, seen Kittle. That. Kittle should be back out there. Uh, Ayuk or Renfro rest of the season? Just out of curiosity. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna go, go Ayuk. Ayuk. All right. The Cowboys at 1-1 one one take on the 2-0 and New York Giants. <laughs> I'm sorry, Giants fans, but you, you're laughing with me. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Giants minus one at home over under 39 points. Our, our, kind of, our bookends on this, this week three, yeah. you get the, the Browns and you get the Steelers and that situation, and then you go to Monday night and you get Daniel Jones versus Cooper Rush. Uh, I mean, you never play those guys in fantasy. <laughs> so then you have to say, well, what are we going to get with their teammates? Saquon led. Let, let me ask you this about Saquon. He has 25 opportunities in both of the weeks. Week one, outstanding. Jason, you were ready to, to ship Austin Eckler off to get Saquon. Week two, same opportunities, not the production, not the fantasy value. Where are you with Saquon? Are you buying low right now based on opportunities? Um, because we don't know what this offense, we don't even know what wide receivers are going to run out there each and every week. And you just talked uh, multiple times about situations where the offenses couldn't get down the field, costing running backs fantasy points. Tell me where you're at. Would you still do that Eckler trade? And where are you with Saquon? The Eckler trade, may, maybe not, but I did try to trade for uh, Barkley with other assets. I the utilization is fantastic. I still think he, you know, you, you don't look as good as you look in week one and then you just lost it. Um, I I am all in on Saquon being great rest of season, so he is a clear target after a down game against Carolina. Dalton Schultz on the other side. Well, let, let's stay with the wide receivers, I guess, for a brief second because sure. we're, we're supposed to do that. But Kadarius Toney, Sterling Shepard, Wandale Robinson – Wandale probably won't be back out there. Kenny G, upset, angry, didn't get any snaps. Shepard is your Jacoby Myers of the yep. offense that you can take your shot at. But, you know, Shepard has always been, even when before the injury, Shepard's always been in this world where you get some good games, you don't get some good games. Yep. And this is season after season. So 
What are you just doing nothing with these guys? I mean, uh, Shepard is a flex play if you're dealing with injuries or, or problems. I think he'll lead the team in targets, lead the team in snaps, lead the team in routes. He's the, the wide receiver one, and it, it could be okay. Dallas, the strength of this team right now is obviously on defense. This should be a low-scoring game. I don't think that it's that Sterling Shepard's a smash play. He's just someone that you can play. On the other side, I was going to say Dalton Schultz. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't look optimistic. You need another plan. You can't wait on Dalton Schultz. You don't know how we talked about it in the beginning of the week. The injury could cause him to be limited. Production could be limited. I think you've got to go someplace else with Dalton Schultz. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Go, and get, then if go Zeke, get Evan Ingram. If Zeke doesn't score a touchdown in this oh, game. Oh, gosh. Are we just – Mike, what are you doing? You're, you're a Zeke manager. Uh, I He's on my bench currently. He has scored uh, four straight games against the New York Giants. So that's, you know – that's a positive, uh, <laughs> but like the utilization is, it's very, it's very confusing of uh, like, and it's not Pollard's a good player, but there's like Zeke has looked, Zeke has looked good. And like, he's not, he, he was, he's not Zeke of four years ago. We all know that, but he's moving the pile. He's getting you four to five yards of carry. It, it, most of the time, so I don't know why they have abandoned him and gone with this other offense. Zeke I, or Daryl Henderson? Zeke. Yeah, I would I would go Zeke over Daryl Henderson Just based on the matchup. Um, but I, I I also think Tony Pollard is is a decent play with Dalton Schultz either being missing or hobbled, um, not being at a hundred percent. He had seven targets last week with the first time we got to see him with Cooper Rush. If Pollard is involved to that degree in the passing game, I think in PPR leagues Pollard is. Is yes. a pretty strong flex play. C.D. Lamb is a wide receiver. What this week? Two, and I think he's a two, two going forward with with no Dak. With no Dak, yeah. Seven for seventy-five. That has to be encouraging on eleven targets. That's great. The rankings, the start sit tool, all on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. dot com. Couple injury updates. James Conner will be a game time decision. Julio what? Jones a game time decision. I, wow. I have I have moved from I, I previously thought if Julio plays I'm going to play him because of the you know the graveyard of other options there, but I think with his injury I would be too scared of him running a route and getting injured. So if he's playing, he's he, Connor is I'm a, not playing him. Connor is a game time decision that sucks. I think he'll play, but yeah, it but puts you in a tough position. I mean, they're is that the afternoon? They're game? at home in Arizona, which is the tech or usually an afternoon game. So that will be you're shaking your head. Kyle? That is a later game. Wow, so I mean, you got to have you have to have one of the backups. Uh, do like we have Darryl injury Williams. blitz the, the injury blitz podcast this afternoon? Uh, after the Friday practice reports, yep. Okay, so for those of you that would like, you know, Matthew Betts' thoughts after all the practice reports, join the dot com. The injury blitz podcast is available every Friday because um, these are tough situations to work through. Yeah. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Well, 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 here we are. Mike and I, very close last week. Yes. 157 to 154. Jason ended up in third, which means he gets to spin the wheel of shame. Yeah. Wheel of shame. can't fake it through this so one. So exciting. Oh, yeah, this is a bad one. Let's go. Spinning the wheel. We got uh, a lot of options. Spartan, Cartoon Man, huh. Banana Face. Oh, no. Or the 12th man. The 12th, the 12th man. man. That's not good. <laughs> I'm a Seahawks <laughs> fan. This is this this is being recorded, Jason. Oh, man. <laughs> For your friends, Andy, your still, family. There's still more. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Oh, is this... Uh, so, uh, you might need to take the glasses off. Is this some eye black? Or? Yeah, you, yeah. Got, you got some eye black. So, he's got a... For, for the, I don't know if you need me, but... YouTube.com uh, slash the fantasy footballers. So, as of right now... There you go. Jason Moore has a sensational Seattle Seahawks bucket hat on and, uh, and an oven mitt that's taking the place of the uh, number one hand. So, go Hawks. make sure you keep that up there. Oh, wow. yeah. You can put your glasses back on if you need them, but... Wow, that is... That is truly shameful. I just yeah, for us love the Seahawks so much. Go Seahawks. <laughs> Gino's number one. Gino's number one. 
This is good. Um, <laughs> at least you don't have a horse face on. I can see, and that is amazing. <laughs> um, can you see yourself? Well, let's yeah. let the Seahawks. <laughs> let's let the Seahawks fan uh, begin our lineups for Week Three. Who do you got at quarterback, Mister well, Moore? Well, we're gonna begin at the top. He's been putting up 40 every week. I'm going with Josh Allen in the cash lineup. What's the cost? He is 8,200. Um, a lot of the prices of the uh, Buffalo Bills from the previous week were locked in early. So I, I think he should be far more than this. All right. I'm going to go. Oh, also, as an example, the uh, just my confidence in Josh Allen, uh -huh. the DK Sportsbook right now has him at a one and a half passing touchdowns, which is like, oh, okay, that you know, right. It, the over is at minus two twenty. Okay, so I mean, so they, it's they, juiced. Two, minimum two passing exactly. touchdowns is what they're calling for. Yeah, uh, make sure you get that uh, number one Seahawks fan in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's trying to pick his nose. I'm going with Kirk Cousins. Okay. I'm taking Kirk Cousins right. at home. He's actually my number two quarterback on the week. Wow. Um, that's a spicy meatball. 6,700 at home against Detroit. Uh, he's going to dominate. Number two on the week? Yeah. Did you forget about Jalen Hurts? Uh, hey. No, no, I didn't. Wow. Am I almost upset of the week? No. Uh, Mike, who's your quarterback? Josh Allen. Uh, nice. Okay, all right. I'm live there. I saved some money. Kirk is only 6,700. Uh, moving to running back, who do you got, Jason? At running back, I... I mean, Rashad Penny, right? Oh, yeah, my Number man. One. My man. Oh, he's Austin. going Penny and Walker. At running yeah. back, I have Penny and Walker. I want all of the uh, wonderful You are points. the 12th man. I am the 12th man. <laughs> um, no, at running back, I have DeAndre Swift, pass catching running back that I think in sure. a full point PPR, he's only 7,200. And David Montgomery, who looked good, he is at home in a favored matchup against the Texans, and he was only 5,900. Well, I have David Montgomery as well, Jason, at 5,900. My running back, though, with a DK Sportsbook line of 98.5 rushing and receiving yards is Joe Mixon yep. against the Jets. I like it. Yeah, he should be uh, in a good spot. I have Miles Sanders costing... <laughs> 5,500 over, nice. over on DK Sportsbook. His line is at 63.5 rushing yards. I think he is going to absolutely uh, dismantle that number. And I also saved a little bit of money here, too, with my other running back. I'm going Damian Pierce, who saw a big uptick in work. And That's they, against Chicago. And they are playing the Chicago Bears. So game script-wise, I think we have a pretty – even matchup, which uh, the Houston Texans can win this game, which that'll be. Let's get Pierce in the end zone. Interesting to watch running back versus running back in that matchup. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I'd rather have Montgomery, but for five thousand, I had to, I had to pay down for Pierce. That is All fair. right, three wide receivers, Jason. Three wide receivers at my first wide receiver, Stephon Diggs. You got to match him up with Josh Allen. I am going to Curtis Samuel at fifty one hundred. And my he's still what? Yeah, fifty one hundred for Curtis Samuel wow. despite two back to back good weeks in Andy's almost upset and um, that's madness. Yeah. So my third wide receiver, I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between three guys, but I am going with Mac Hollins thirty eight hundred. He is a freebie if Hunter Renfro is gone through the concussion 3, protocol. Thirty three hundred. Thirty three hundred. Sorry, uh, even cheaper. Yes, I was. Uh, he was in my lineup. He is not anymore. So it was very close because uh, my three wide receivers: Justin Jefferson, nice at ninety three hundred to match the Kirk Cousins, and then I went with Amon Ross St. Brown in that same matchup. I have a lot riding on Detroit, Minnesota. Amon Ross seventy two hundred, and my third shot here for New Orleans is Chris Olave at forty five hundred. So I also have Mac Hollins. The uh, I mean, if you got Josh Allen in which that means I also have Stephon Diggs in. You have to save money somewhere. And if uh, if uh, Renfro does not play, Matt Collins will see an uptick at work. And he's already seeing a whole bunch of targets. Like, it's it's outrageous how much he is involved. Uh, so who did I – so I got Diggs, Matt Collins, and the sun god Amon Ross St. Brown. Oh, you got him as well. I mean, 7,200 for what that guy Has been is doing. producing is – I'm going to tell you as a, Seahawks, cheap. as a Seahawks fan. Yes. I'm very scared of you guys both having Amon Ross St. Brown. Yes, you should be. All right, final three. Jason, your tight end, your flex, and your defense. My tight end, my flex, and my defense. I'll start at the bottom. I have the Jets at only 2,400. They are home against the turnover machine Joe Burrow right now. I'm hoping they can uh, keep the bad vibes going for the Bengals. 
At tight end, Irv Smith, only 3100 Okay. Uh, he was priced down in the breakout last week, did not get priced in. And at flex, Leonard Fournette. Oh, P the dump truck. The dump truck dumps like a truck. Uh, PPR machine at 6500 All right, here's where all my savings was because I have some pretty high-end running do. backs. Um, I had the Jets in. I pivoted. I went to the Raiders for uh, just a little bit more, taking on Tennessee that offense, the Vermont, I know the Vermont narrative is there for you, Jason, but the Raiders defense, Tennessee has not been able to do a lot. Uh, I had Mac Hollins in. I pivoted. I ended up spending 100 more buckaroos for Sky Moore, who I think will be on the field and have an opportunity to do some more explosive things than Mac Collins. And then my bargain basement, bottom of the barrel, tight end, is Isaiah Likely, uh, who okay. had five targets last week. He's 2,800. If he doesn't play, because he is questionable, but has been practicing, I will pivot to Kylan Granson for 100 fewer dollars. Sure. Uh, so I have the Hig Beast as my tight end. I think he will be a, a PPR machine. That those targets will continue to flow. My flex is actually Mac Hollins. So that means, but you had already said it, so I just mm -hmm. wanted to, you know, I had it. But, so that means my other wide receiver is T Higgins. Ooh, nice. Uh, at just 6,100. Continues to go target for target with Jamar Chase, and the price is nowhere near that of Jamar Chase. And I completely punted my defense off a bridge. <laughs> for the uh, the good of the fantasy footballers, I am playing the Arizona Cardinals <laughs> at home against the Rams. Let's see if uh, – Well, how much is Rocks, that, 2,000? Uh, yeah, well, 2,400. Okay. So we'll see if uh, – Rocks in the elbow. Matty Stafford can throw. You guys have any budget left? Up. I have a hundred left. I got a hundred dollars left. Um, I should have a hundred plus uh five hundred. I have six hundred left. <laughs> I pivoted <laughs> on show from oh. Romeo Dobbs to Mac Hollins. I see. I see. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the promo code Ballers to get two hundred dollars in free bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet on any football game. That's the code Ballers. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You know this footage is forever. Yeah. Go Hawks! Yeah, Josh, Papa Josh, cut this up. Make sure his family, friends, see this. 12th man over here. Love the Seahawks. That'll do it for today's show. Like I said, Injury Blitz podcast this afternoon at jointhefoot.com. Thank you for joining us, following the show. Enjoy the weekend. See you on Sunday, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.